SpaceX aimed to cap off 2023 with a monumental Falcon Heavy launch, ferrying a U.S. military space plane. However, the anticipation was clouded by unfortunate news, a farewell to the esteemed Booster 1058 after completing 19 flawless landings. This Falcon 9 booster holds immense importance, serving as SpaceX's vehicle for delivering cargo and crew to space. Beyond its utility, it stands as a significant milestone in American aviation, marking the end of over a decade-long reliance on Russian counterparts. But what happened that led to the curtain call of this prolific first stage? And what did Elon Musk have to say about it? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. December 26th of 2023, the first U.S. commercial rocket to launch astronauts into orbit has met its end after being destroyed during its latest post-flight recovery. Referred to by SpaceX by its serial number B-1058, the Falcon 9 first stage was being transported back to shore after its record-setting 19th flight when the booster tipped over due to high winds and waves, the company reported on X on the 25th. Two days earlier, the stage had helped launch 23 of SpaceX's Starlink broadband satellites before successfully touching down on the company's drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which was stationed in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Many had hoped it would return in at least somewhat good condition, but no such luck. Photos shared online of the returning ship revealed that only the lower segment of B-1058 remained, with three of its four landing legs still deployed and all nine of its Merlin engines still intact although some were distorted. A closer inspection reveals intriguing scuff marks on the engine nozzles, evidence of their exposure to exhaust gases during landing. Quite a fascinating detail. Moreover, the redesigned booster core offers a more intricate view of its internal components, notably the revamped COPVs or Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessels introduced after the CRS-7 incident. To be honest, it seems that the loss of Booster 1058 is not overly concerning for SpaceX. Right after SpaceX shared the iconic booster's fate, Elon Musk, the head of the company, posted a magnificent an image of B-1058's landing and simply tweeted, the future is bright. The implication is to focus on the best things in the future, and there are undoubtedly many more exciting developments to come. So, B-1058, thank you for your service. John Edwards, SpaceX's VP of Falcon Launch Vehicles, wrote on X, we are planning to salvage the engines and do life leader inspections on the remaining hardware. There is still quite a bit of value in this booster. We will not let it go to waste. Additionally, Kiko Donchev, the Senior Director of Launch and Recovery Operations at SpaceX, explained on X why Booster 1058 could be easily toppled by strong winds. It turns out that a tippy booster occurs under specific landing conditions where the legs experience uneven loading. Heavy winds or rough sea conditions can cause the booster to teeter and slide, worsening the leg loading. Securing it with the Octa Grabber, or OG, in this state is extremely challenging and often only partially successful. Following a severe tippy booster incident two years ago on Christmas, the first flight of B-1068, SpaceX developed self-leveling legs that instantly equalize leg loads upon landing. Wow, it's been two years already. Anyway, most of the fleet is equipped with this feature, but due to its age, 1058 wasn't. Its fate was sealed when it encountered intense wind and waves, resulting in the failure of a partially secured OG less than 100 miles from home. And he also affirmed that one thing is for sure, we will make lemonade out of lemons and learn as much as possible from historic 1058 on our path to aircraft-like operations. Indeed, an old rocket like 1058 is crucial for the company to gather invaluable flight data. It'll contribute to helping SpaceX advance its groundbreaking thrust reuse efforts. I see the flight rate can only occur 
prefer if I can increase reliability so that they're not competing entities, a SpaceX official shared with Ars Technica. The official also said SpaceX might extend the limit on Falcon 9 booster flights beyond 20, the number at which Falcon 9s are currently certified for Starlink missions. Even achieving 40 to 50 reuse cycles for the booster is something that SpaceX can easily accomplish in the future. Although the loss of B-1058 is incredibly regrettable, it came remarkably close to achieving the milestone of 20 successful flights. With 19 successful launches and landings, it remains an outstanding achievement all on its own. It went out, but in a blaze of glory, becoming a legacy of its reliability and exceptional service that'll forever be honored and remembered in the annals of space exploration history. However, B-1058 holds significance not only for its 19 successful reused missions, but also for its historical importance in carrying NASA astronauts to the International Space Station from U.S. soil for the first time in nearly a decade. It was a nine-year gap in the United States' ability to launch astronauts into low Earth orbit, and it was the first achievement of its kind by a commercial spacecraft. Lost with the upper segment of B-1058 was unique. The booster was the only stage in SpaceX's fleet to be adorned with the Space Agency's worm logo type. I'm talking about NASA's logo. On May 30th of 2020, B-1058 lifted off for the first time on SpaceX's Demo-2, or shortened to DM-2, mission, carrying NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley aboard the company's Crew Dragon capsule Endeavour. The two-month-long mission to the International Space Station was the first to launch American astronauts from the United States since the end of NASA's space shuttle program in 2011. Even before Hurley and Behnken returned home from their 63-day mission, B-1058 had already wrapped up a second flight, launching again the following 20th of July with the geostationary-bound ANASIS-2 military communications satellite for the government of South Korea. In doing so, it established a new empirical record, now broken, of only 51 days between pairs of launches by the same orbital class booster, eclipsing an old space shuttle record that had stood for more than three decades. B-1058 then entered a regular cadence of launch operations, successfully delivering 625 Starlink low-orbiting internet communications satellites to orbit via the multi-payload transporter one rideshare flight in January of 2021 and 14 dedicated missions between October of 2020 and last weekend. Notably, transporter one saw it loft the highest number of discrete payloads, a whopping 143, tipping the scales at around 5,000 kilograms, the most ever launched by a single U.S. orbital class rocket. Other payloads included the first Cargo Dragon to fly to the ISS under the second round Commercial Resupply Services 2 contract. Launched in December of 2020, the month-long CRS-21 mission saw B-1058 help deliver over 2,900 kilograms of equipment and supplies to the incumbent Expedition 64 crew and return around 2,000 kilos of unneeded gear and experiment results back to Earth. Included in 1058's ISS-bound haul was was the Bishop Commercial Airlock, developed jointly by Thales Alania Space, Boeing, and NanoRacks for installation onto the station's Tranquility node. CRS-21 became the first cargo dragon to autonomously dock rather than robotically berth using the Canadarm2 manipulator, and in launching it, 1058 also marked SpaceX's 100th fully successful Falcon 9 mission. Although her launch log has been overwhelmingly dominated by Starlink, with over 73% of her 19 flights devoted to the internet communications network, B-1058 also lifted the 105 payload Transporter 3 on her own 10th mission in January of 2022. That particular mission also saw her land for the first and only time in her career on solid ground, alighting on Landing Zone 1 at Cape Canaveral Space Force 
Force Station, her 18 other flights all returning to the decks of the autonomous spaceport drone ship. SpaceX posted on X, this one reusable rocket booster alone launched to orbit two astronauts and more than 860 satellites, totaling 260 plus metric tons in about three and a half years. In short, with B-1058 gone, three boosters, 1060, 61, and 62, stand as the current fleet leaders, each having reached 17 missions, B-10 in September and the others late last month and early in December. And behind them stand two others with 15 flights to their credit, three more that have already passed the 10 mission mark, and a dozen others that are either repeat flyers as single stick Falcon 9s or Falcon Heavy side boosters, or are waiting the opening launches of their careers in the coming days and weeks. These newer Falcon boosters proudly feature advanced landing legs designed for self-balancing and preventing risks similar to those encountered by B-1058. Was there a memorable moment of the B-1058 booster that you would like to share? Let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Always remember that your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, we thank you so much again and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, Happy New Year!